Cannabis use has been on the rise, but one area of cannabis that is not commonly discussed is its effects on mental health. So in today's video, we will be discussing the effects of cannabis and its association with various mental health disorders. In the United States, more than 11.8 million young adults reported using marijuana in 2018. And in 2011, there were nearly 456,000 drug-related emergency department visits in the United States where marijuana use was mentioned in their medical records. Well, what is cannabis and what is it made out of? Cannabis is a well-known drug which is known to alter the mind and body. It is also known as pot, weed, ganja, marijuana, and many other terms. People either smoke cannabis through a hand-rolled cigarette or through vapors and edibles. Cannabis is derived from the plant Cannabis sativa, which contains high amounts of THC. This stands for Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. This contains a psychoactive component that makes people feel high. The other component of cannabis is cannabidiol, which is used to reduce pain and inflammation. Now that we know the components of cannabis, you must be wondering about its effects on the brain and body. When a person smokes cannabis, THC and CBD go into the lungs and to the bloodstream. Once the chemicals are in the bloodstream, it is transported throughout the body, though the after effects of drugs are experienced at different intensities. General effects include increased appetite for food, laughter and joy, and the ability to hear, see, smell, taste, and feel drastically increases. Focusing on the short-term effects of cannabis on the brain, cannabis creates tiredness, difficulty in remembering information, concentrating, and confusion. It can also lead to anxiety, fear, and reduce the ability of a person to react quickly, thus making it dangerous to drive or operate equipment. Short-term effects also include psychotic episodes including paranoia, delusion, or even hallucinations. However, the long-term effects of cannabis use are severe. The ability for the brain to remember information, concentrate, make decisions can significantly decrease, as well as the overall IQ. These effects can be permanent, even after cannabis is stopped, and can be experienced differently depending on the person, especially on age. Now that we know about the effects of cannabis on the brain, let's dive into its effects on the body. In the short term, cannabis damages blood vessels, decreases blood pressure, and increases heart rate. These can further cause the person to faint, become prone to heart conditions, or get a heart attack. If a person continues to smoke cannabis, in the long term, they can experience problems with their lungs. This can increase their risk of bronchitis, lung infections, chronic cough, or increased buildup of mucus in the throat. Cannabis can be used for both medicinal and recreational purposes. And in Canada, 330,000 Canadians are using marijuana for medical purposes. Some pros of medical marijuana is that it's safer to use in opiates, it's less addictive, it's a great muscle relaxant, it's less in tremors in those with Parkinson's disease, it's eased pain in people with multiple sclerosis, it's managed nausea and weight loss in people with glycoma, and research has shown promising results for PTSD. However, you can build a tolerance to medical marijuana, causing one to continuously increase their dosage to relieve pain. In addition, it's not readily available in all countries, as every country has different laws regulating its use. Recreational marijuana usage is controversial. In Canada, it is legal to use and has reduced the black market network of cannabis distribution, increasing consumer safety, and utilizing taxpayer money for other uses. However, recreational usage has negative impacts such as its long-lasting effects on the brain and increased risk for mental health issues. Now let's dive into the age demographics of cannabis usage. As shown in this graph, we can see that the majority of cannabis users are below the age of 44, with the highest rate of cannabis consumption being in the age group of 25 to 34, and the lowest rate of cannabis consumers above the age of 65. 
But what's really interesting is that a literature review conducted from the year 2000 to 2017 saw that the highest increase in cannabis use was observed in the older adult population 50 years or older, and specifically those 65 years or older had the greatest increase in marijuana use. Some correlates of cannabis use in the older age group were listed in the study and included being male, unmarried, having various chronic diseases and psychological stress, as well as the use of other substances such as alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drugs. One question that often comes to mind when thinking about cannabis usage is how does frequent marijuana use increase the development of mental disorders, such as psychosis, schizophrenia, depression, and bipolar disorder, and is there even a link between cannabis and these mental health illnesses? Well, for starters, cannabis is prevalent in 50% of psychosis cases. THC has been linked with causing positive psychosis symptoms and neurocognitive changes by altering the prefrontal cortex and reducing synaptic density. In addition, psychoactive effects in marijuana varies depending on the amount of THC consumed. Also, it is suggested that endogenous cannabinoids, the ones made by our own bodies, have protective effects against the psychoactive impacts of THC. A study looking at risk factors of psychosis development in cannabis users suggests that adolescents between the ages of 15 to 18 had more psychosis episodes compared to control subjects. Maternal cannabis use or using cannabis while pregnant may also contribute to psychosis in the child during later stages of their life. Cannabis and schizophrenia, a mental disorder where people receive reality through hallucinations, delusions, and disorganized thinking. Studies suggest that marijuana exposure might be one factor that interacts with many other factors to become a possible causative agent in schizophrenia. However, there is not a causal relationship between the two. Similar to psychosis, adolescent exposure to cannabis is associated with a higher risk of developing schizophrenia compared to adult cannabis usage. Overall, more research needs to be conducted to examine the complex relationship between cognition, cannabis, and schizophrenia. Several longitudinal studies show that cannabis placed individuals at a moderate risk of developing depression. Unfortunately, they were unable to determine if it caused depression. Also, cannabis was associated with increased risk of school dropout and unemployment, which may indirectly cause depression. THC has psychoactive effects which regulate mood and has been associated with increased anxiety symptoms. Several studies concluded that cannabis placed individuals at a small risk of developing anxiety. However, similar to cannabis use in depression, there's little evidence to suggest that cannabis causes anxiety. Several studies show high rates of co-occurrence of cannabis and bipolar disorders. Cannabis has shown to worsen manic symptoms in those with pre-existing bipolar disorder and might also contribute to the genesis of manic-type symptoms in those with no pre-existing bipolar disorder. If you or someone you know is addicted to marijuana, there are many treatment options available. First, it's important to educate yourself on the risks and dangers of cannabis. See a therapist or join community programs to meet people who are going through similar experiences. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and share this video and subscribe to the Domestifying Medicine YouTube channel. See you next time.